This time on Pedalbox, big milestone of the car, we are finally installing the windscreen. It's going to look amazing. Maybe not with this one in though. Welcome back to another episode of Pedalbox and on this episode I hope to bring you the single largest change to the outside of this car in weeks, nay months, possibly even more than a year because by the end of this episode we are going to have a windscreen in this car. Not that broken one you saw in the intro, we actually have a nice one that I've been stashing in the house and trying not to break for the better part of two years now. But we're actually gonna put a good quality windscreen in here with no chips, no cracks, nothing, as well as the quarter lights, and actually close in the whole dashboard area so that this winter, it's not gonna get waterlogged, assuming the seal works, which I hope it will. But there is one more thing we need to do before that, and that is cover our dashboard panels. We could do this afterwards. These just have a friction fit into the front because obviously having any fastening, once you have a windscreen in the way, becomes very, very difficult to deal with. We're gonna pop rivet this section in, which is still gonna be hard to get the pop rivets out if we need to, but not impossible, like here. There is a video going around the internet where somebody takes a screw out by just punching a hole in the windscreen and then zipping it out. I have to assume it's a duff windscreen, but Either way, we are not doing that. Now we've spent ages, episode after episode, working on the wiring underneath this dashboard in order to make sure that we've got everything we can possibly think of done. And we're now at a point that we're pretty sure it is. All of the wiring is done, and we've also got those speaker mounts in we put in last episode, so we no longer need to put our hands or the welding torch or anything through where the glass is gonna go. That means we can actually put the glass in, but as I say, before we do that, I wanna get these covered, because it's just gonna be a little bit easier to get this finished and be able to really make sure that the fit is good along the front edge here without having the windscreen in. So the first job, cover these up, get a little bit more progress on the dash done. This is the same padding that we used on the front of the dash. We're just gonna apply it on the top with some spray contact adhesive, exactly the same as we did the last time. This is actually an old yoga mat that was donated by my other half because I'm pretty certain she has at least half a dozen of them. So we just need to put a light coating of this, specifically around the edges. Make sure we get decent adhesion across there and just a light coating in the center. And then because this is porous, you have to do both sides and then just let it dry or go tacky rather. It doesn't want to dry, it just wants to be tacky. And just uh, cover this up. Now we just wait a couple of minutes for this to go tacky and we pretty much get one shot at trying to apply this. So hopefully it goes down in the right place the first time and uh, we can get it to wrap around properly. Wish me luck. Well, this has been, had a few minutes now to go off. It is just say tacky on both sides. And I'm gonna get Chris to give me a hand to actually try and lower this into place on that side. Around there. Well, I hope it's in the right place. <laughs> oh, made it by a quarter of an inch at that end. Cool, that should now hold that in place while it all dries. The main body of it is fine. It's just where it's got a very hard curve round on this end. We don't need full coverage on it, fortunately, right the way round, but we do want it to bond pretty well. So we'll leave this for probably a good 10, 20 minutes. I don't think it actually says. Nope, it doesn't say how long it takes to dry. It just sticks and does its thing, which it clearly doesn't because we need the clamps. So we'll leave this and start on the next one. Now this is all cut out. It's looking reasonably good. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be able to use this for the final build. These cracks across here, are just they're not going to take a nice covering like a vinyl or something for, for weatherproofing particularly nicely. They're going to see these cracks throughout. And even if these cracks do eventually bounce back and it goes nice and smooth, this one 
on this panel where the parcel tape that was used to wrap this up at some point before we got it has torn out and it's about a quarter of an inch deep you know five five six millimeters across here and there's no way I can think of of trying to fill this in in a sensible fashion short of just cutting a chunk out and putting a new piece in which we could do but we'd still have to clean it all off because this is adhered now there's no peeling this off anymore so I think we're probably going to have to do this all again at some point in the future given there's open sort of tear through this depending on what type of foam it is I'm not sure how absorbent this is going to be we might end up having to accelerate covering this with a nice vinyl covering so that it doesn't just absorb water and rot over the winter but in the meantime we are going to be able to put this in and make sure that the theory of using this kind of foam actually works and if we do need to recover it we can always perhaps use some slightly thinner stuff instead of this very very thick mat but we'll go and have a look at the car and see what it's like. Just on the first test fit and we've trimmed off this edge where it sits underneath here. We knew we were going to have to take some more off and I'm also thinning the very front edge out a little bit with these scissors so that it will just tuck in a little bit nicer underneath the uh, windscreen surround. That is a little bit better fitting again, hopefully. This hooks over that side, that tucks under there, and then it just fits in and under like that. That is reasonably good. I've taken a little bit too much off there, but that's not going to be too much of an issue. That bit fits in nicely. We might actually need to just throw an extra little bit of foam in into that section padded on the underside here, just so that it has something to sit up against again. We don't want it rattling around although actually i think we'll probably get away with that if i'm completely honest and all right chris can pass me the other one over because we need to get this fit on this side also matching and yeah this yeah. is going to need trimming down slightly more to fit in that should give me enough of a line and i can take a little bit of this edge off and then we can put these two bits in So the plan here is with this little shelf piece, that is going to provide enough um, anti-vibration for these panels to sit in properly without actually getting in the way of one another. Ah, I need to go a little bit further in in this one, I think. Yep. So we can pop rivet this panel in now, get that in for reels, and then work on fitting this one in properly and then get onto the windscreen. So what did we learn? Well, apparently the edge of this has folded across slightly or I didn't build it right in the first place, neither of which I'm particularly thrilled with, but this edge right along the front here that we worked and tweaked up so it came closer in contact with the screen has remained that way, which is great. I'm really happy with that. There is some gap underneath it down this way that Unfortunately, we're just going to have to RTV around the whole thing to blend it into the body, which isn't great, but considering our knowledge and experience and what we're doing, I'm kind of happy to just run with. The top edge as well isn't completely perfect. We are going to have to build this front edge up to match the screen, but I was kind of aware that that was probably going to be the case because we didn't have the screen in when I was doing this because the old one was so badly shattered, it had just collapsed in and it was conforming to any given shape so the fact that the new one is close i'm kind of okay with but this edge down here needs a little bit of work so if you just pass me a set of grips i am just going to tweak this up into place yeah you're running right well the time has come We've got some white sealant as well as black. So we're going to put the white stuff down here where it is more easily covered by all of the sort of uh, the black section of the windscreen where you can't see it. So hopefully it won't look terrible. We're going to put the white on for now, get it all the way across the bottom, run around the top and then try and seat it. And I'm not going to lie, I'm a little bit nervous. Top down. Oh, 
Right. <sighs> okay. Now we just leave it, right? And uh, hope that it sets. And then tomorrow we shouldn't be able to push that screen out. And if we can, then we have to clean it all off and start from scratch. But uh, that is a tomorrow problem. Well, I promised you if everything went well, we were gonna have windows in by the end of this episode. And as you can quite plainly see, everything went well. Yeah, we were really delighted we came up this morning after working well into the dark hours yeah. last night, getting all the sealant in, making sure it was uh, it was fully done all the way around, make sure we'd had no gaps, getting it right in underneath the glass. There was a lot of area to cover here. And to be honest, we didn't really have enough sealant to do a proper job of it on round one. So we've been back in today yeah. doing a second layer, getting everything done up again. But when we came out and we saw not a drop of rain or moisture or anything inside, so I mean, there's condensation in the screen, obviously, but it wasn't wet inside. It, had, it wasn't like clear rivers of water had been running down where it had been leaking or anything. So yeah, that was a, an absolute joy to behold. We came out, we we're like, imagine how much <laughs> rework and clean up <laughs> This is going to save us. Genuinely, in it was it was so good to actually see that it, it just it didn't have water inside yeah. after days and days of having to come out, mop it all out again, get the heat gun on it to try and dry yeah. it out so we could do stuff. Like the fact that we didn't have to do that today, mind blowingly good. But yeah, the, the number of times we've had to go across the metalwork under under here and like take all the rust off, go over it with yeah. acid, repaint it, and everything has been an absolute nightmare. So seeing an, an, an end to that is brilliant. And on some level, like it's really obvious, if you put glass over a thing, rain stops getting on it. So we're not like surprised, <laughs> but it's still really nice. I'm more surprised that the seal we put down underneath here actually got all the way around and did what we needed it to do. I was, that was my biggest concern. And as, as Chris said, we have gone over and put some extra sealant in the top. And there are a few little spots that still need to go and be uh, backfilled some. Obviously, you'll be able to see from there, the windscreen sits higher than the bodywork does on the roof of the car. So at some point, I'm going to have to just bring this up a little bit so that there's not a weird, awkward step right in the middle of the car. But otherwise, it is looking really good. I think considering how long it's been since I built the frame for this in the middle of 2020 and put the cage in and everything else. And then we've been kind of working everything off that busted ass screen <laughs> that you saw at the beginning of the episode, that everything still lines up as well as it does. I'm so happy. Yeah, there's been so many times where we're like, we've built a frame somewhere on the car to put something onto, and then by making something else, like the, the warping or the, t the stress that we've put into it with other welds somewhere else, have pulled things out of line and stuff ends up not fitting. So for this to have still worked yeah. after three plus years, is kind of a minor miracle to me. Yeah, I, I, I could not be happier and yeah. it looks so good. And the quarter lights went in really nicely as well. There's the usual little gaps around them where they don't quite fit because they've got a bit of curve and we might not have put quite enough curve in these frames. And again, they've been added to and, uh, and moved around thermally yeah. a little bit when we've been welding. So the fact that they all fit at all and we can fix it with a little bit extra silicon is, is just thrilling. Yeah. But they're in, they seal nicely, just, oh, I, 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 I keep saying it, but I just cannot get over how happy I am that it actually works and yeah. it's actually in and, oh, it's yeah. so good. I, I remain a little bit concerned if we do need to do any major surgery under the dash here. I hope we don't need to. And as far as yeah. we know, we don't, we, the way things are looking, we don't, yeah. but we might be wrong. If we do have to dig around in there, that's going to be a whole barrel of laughs now. But at least, I, I think actually the amount of extra work that will add is less than the rework it will save us. I think we're still yeah, winning. Massively. Yeah. So fortunately, we managed to do all of this without breaking a windscreen, which means we don't need to buy a third one. So that's good news. And that means that if you are supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show, your donations will not be going towards more glass yet until we break this. But we won't break this, so it will go towards other things on the car. It used to be welding gas, we were doing a lot of that, but I think we're not far off done yeah, with welding. So now it's going to be like brake fixtures, yeah. shifter cables, or yeah. paying off the shifter cables because yeah. those are quite expensive. The shifter cables are on yeah. order, they should be here soon, but I don't know how many episodes it will be between now and when we actually get them fitted because they have quite a long lead time on them. But if you'd like to help us buy the shifter cables as well, you can go to shop.pedalbox.show where you can buy beanies like this, t-shirts like the one I think I'm wearing underneath. You I've are wearing a long sleeve one. 
one. It does do a great job of keeping me warm under my jumper. Yeah, you can buy all of those. And if you are a patron, you also get a discount at shop.pedalbox.show as well. So with that, I will leave you with a couple more shots of this looking glorious. And we will see you in the next episode.